What's up, everybody? Welcome to the episode six of the Stats Free Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Jarrell Hicks, here with you today. And let's get right into it, man. Uh, let's get into some news that happened today, uh, which I talked about last week, and I'm, I'm not surprised that it happened. Dana White has officially released Chris Cyborg, um, something I called last week. Um, they just didn't get along. He's been and uh, she's been claiming that uh, he's been bullying her and stuff like that, and you know he has in the past in, in public too. So along with things I listed last week that he's um, done to her or not done to her, with her being a big name and former champion, he has not uh, treated her as a champion, as, as a true champion that she should be. So um, they decided to part ways, and he he will not. Uh, pursue signing her again or matching any contracts so um, that's kind of a sad news for UFC she she behind Amanda, Amanda Nunes she was the only one that could possibly in my opinion possibly beat her so uh, Amanda Nunes might retire in my opinion next year or two with no real competition with both belts in a women's division but um, like I said we, we saw it coming so not a real big shocker, but kind of a sad news for the UFC. Um, don't want to spend too much time on this next stuff, but uh, the David Griffin and the Le- LeBron James uh, fiasco, um, not a big deal. Um, David Griffin has walked his comments back. He said uh, the Sports Illustrated um, Mac Magazine article was taken out of context, so he decided to, you know, address it as a man. He did it on national TV live. Um, I forgot what that show is called, but on ESPN basically, and um, he clarified his statement. So um, no real big deal, you know. Him and LeBron have a good relationship, so they both say. So uh, nothing really to talk about there. Um, on to. Stephen A. Smith interviewing uh, Carlo Mel- Carmelo Anthony. Um, I talked about Car- Carmelo last week and his future and, um, you know, how I felt about his situation, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but I want to um, shout out Stephen A. for a great interview. Um, I didn't watch it live, but I saw it on YouTube clips, and um, he did a great, phenomenal job. He asked Carmelo all the tough, the tough real questions. And, um, you know, I, I was kind of surprised, but knowing Stephen A., I shouldn't be surprised, but he did a wonderful job, though. Um, like I said, asked the tough questions everybody want to know, um, asked real questions. Um, only question I think I didn't hear him asked, I wanted to get asked, was uh, or get answered, was uh, how he felt about, how Carmelo felt about not being invited to Team USA. Like I said, I did not see it live. I saw it. Um, I saw. Um, I saw YouTube clips. So um, I don't know if I saw every clip, but um, in total, the, the clips amounted to about 19, 20 minutes. So I'm not sure how long it was. It was live, but uh, I believe I did see every clip. If I didn't, if I missed that answer, I apologize. But um, I did not hear him ask. Uh, Carmelo about uh, his no invite to be on Team USA. Team USA was not a big deal. It's not nothing crazy, but that's just something I want to hear Carmelo's personal take on. I know he did mention it. Carmelo did a few times, but he didn't. I don't believe Stephen A. asked how he felt about it, about not getting the invite. But it's no, it's no biggie. Uh, like I said, Stephen A. did a great job. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it because I talked about Carmelo last week. So let's get on to our major. Uh, our main topics today. Um, while we already on basketball, let's stay with basketball. Um, I see on NBA Twitter, it's a real big debate on who's the best big man in the NBA. And um, y'all know my takes personally. I think Joel Embiid is the third best player in the world right now. With Kevin Durant hurt, uh, with, with Kevin Durant healthy, he'll be fourth in my opinion. But um, no, I do love Joel Embiid. So, but people are saying uh, uh, Joseph Nurkic, not Nurkic, uh, um, 
Jokic from the Denver Nuggets. What's his first name? Nikolai Jokic. Yeah. Um, the center for uh, the All Star center for um, the Denver Nuggets, Nikolai Jokic, uh, or Joel Embiid, who's the number one center uh, in the league today. I don't think it's really that close because Jokic is, isn't uh, as proficient as Joel Embiid is uh, on defensive side of the ball. Uh, jo- Joel is probably, I would, just off the top of the head, probably the best shot blocker, center, shot blocking center we have. Him, Jared Allen, uh, Hassan Whiteside don't play that much really for he did he didn't for the Heat his, this last past uh, this past season. Uh, Bam for the Heat, he's a decent shot blocker. He's he's he, he's solid. Um, let's see, JaVale McGee. No, yeah, jo- jo- Joel's probably one of the better shot blockers um, and overall centers at the defensive, I mean, excuse me, overall defenders at the center position. Um, Jokic isn't the strongest defender. He's he's a great passer, good scorer at all levels of um, on the offensive end, inside, outside, mid-range. Uh, I'll, still, I'll still give um, Joel the better score scoring mark uh joel in my opinion no matter what the stats show because i believe brett brown um and also ben simmons are at fault for uh joel and b bad numbers shoot shooting a three-point um ball but um i do believe joel and b is a better scorer better rebounder uh better assist man oh no no excuse me i think yoke is the better passer but uh and B can pass too, but uh, Jokic is a, a elite passing big man. And B isn't quite elite, but he's he's average to slightly above average passer. But um, overall, let's say short and sweet, I'm gonna give it to B. Like I said, and B is a top three player in my opinion for a reason. He's an overall monster offense defense. Um, he can do everything. I and I especially think he'll even look he'll look a lot better. Once Ben Simmons space the floor out this this past this next season, and shooting that ball a little bit more, um, so I give it to Joel Embiid, but Jokic is a close close second. I just think the defensive end separates uh, Joel and Nikolai Jokic in in the one two ranking. But um, Nikolai Lo- Nikolai Jokic probably top fifteen, top twenty player in in uh, the world right now. But, uh, yeah, I was kind of conf- confused seeing that on Twitter. Like, the best big man, who? You talking about Davis and, and B, but I saw Jokic. I'm like, eh. I can I can see where the argument come from. Because, you know, he's a triple-double um, mach- machine. Uh, talk, talking about Nikolai Jokic. But that's just their system. You know, they don't really have a passing point guard. Jamal Murray is a, a score first guard. Gary Harris, not really a playmaker either. So Jokic, a uh, highly gifted big man who, who can pass and score. So he does a lot of the passing uh, from, from the post or from the elbow. So um, like I said, he they the Nuggets utilize his strength uh, the best of anybody in the league. You know, outside of uh, the way Le- Le- LeBron uses h- himself, I think Jokic is used great also um, in his system. But um, not that he's a system player, but the system kind of conforms around him and his skill set, especially with his point guard being being a scorer um, like Jamal Murray. It's perfect for Jokic to he has four scores around him: Paul Millsap, Gary Harris. Uh, Tory Craig and Jamal Murray, so that's a good good lineup for um, Jokic to get his assist numbers up in. But I still do believe and be the best, the better player, the better center um, overall. But between the two, but um, I want to get straight into this prediction. I have a big trade prediction that I I predict to happen at the trade deadline. So um, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Stats Free Sports on, on both, 
Instagram, Stash Free Sports, at Stash Free Sports, Facebook, at Stash Free Sports. If you want to follow me, follow me. DM me, ask questions. Uh, we can do, we can do, do, we can debate on certain topics, on different topics. You can give me topics for the show. Um, I love I love all the um, debate and chatter. So you want to get at me on uh, Facebook, Instagram at Stats Free Sports on both of those social media um, sites. Again at Stats Free Sports. Um, but I have a, a trade deadline deal, a bombshell deal that's gonna, in my opinion, that will happen. It should happen. I think it will happen. It works best for all teams involved, all players involved. Also, they all need fresh starts, brand new, brand new places to uh, play. And I think this might be a situation um, they'll work out for a few teams. So that trade involves Bradley Beal and Chris Paul. But not just those two guys. It's a third player, a third, uh, I'm not going to say star, but a fringe star, a potential star, if he ever gets consistent. But that's a, 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 a three-way deal between three star-ish type players, Chris Paul, Bradley Beal, and Andrew Wiggins. And I think they all just rotate spots. So I think... Um, Chris Paul will be traded to Minnesota Timberwolves. Like, as I said last week, um, I believe the Timberwolves are an option for Chris Paul. They're, they're, they're an outside option. Uh, I do understand that because he's, you know, with with Cat there, and they just got rid of Jimmy Butler. Why would you bring in a Jimmy Butler attitude type of player like Chris Paul? But they might be so desperate to get out of that Andrew Wiggins contract for the long term, they might take that short that short term loss and uh, go ahead and take on Chris Paul contract. You know, in, in the off season this past off season, they were trying to um, they were trying to get D'Angelo Russell, but he ended up getting traded to the Warriors. So they might be out of that mix. I don't think the Warriors. I could see the Warriors wanting. Um, Andrew Wiggins, I can see that, but I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I think the Warriors, um, no, I might be, I might, I might be tripping. Hold on now. Yeah, I, yeah, uh, so yeah, I know my, I'm, I'm, I, I am, I'm on, I'm on track. So yeah, so. Andrew Wiggins to the uh, I got lost in them for a minute. Andrew Wiggins going to the uh, oh excuse me, Chris Paul going to the Timberwolves. Andrew Wiggins going to the Wizards to replace the the, the hole that Otto Porter left um, a year ago when he was traded away to, to the Chicago Bulls, and then Bradley Beal going to the Thunder. To partner up with Shea, Shea Gilchrist, he'll slide into the true point guard spot. Because with him and Chris Paul there, I'm sure Chris Paul will be starting at the point guard, and Shea Gilchrist Alexander will be the two guard because his defense and him being so long and being a, a good young defender. So uh, he'll slide into his true natural, his natural true point guard position, while Bradley Beal being the the star shooting guard. That's a better situation, in my opinion, than uh, him being with John Wall in, in, in uh, the Washington Wizards. Because the Wizards has been on a plummet for the last three years. And you know, John Wall had that freak injury. I think he hurt himself at home or something like that. He would have torn Achilles or something like that. He fell in the shower or whatever. He, excuse, he, he, he made up. But um, he's out for all this season, too. So he was out last season, out this season. So um, I'm going to look for the Wizards to potentially get back Andrew Wiggins and like a few of those uh, first round picks that the Thunder have stored up for for Bradley Beal. And also I have some bad news for uh, you Warriors haters out there. So that's that's option one for, for, for Bradley Beal. So Bradley Beal going to the Thunder, Chris Paul going to the Timberwolves, the partner with Carter and Anthony Towns, and 
Andrew Wiggins and a few first round picks are going to the Washington Wizards for Bradley Beal. Right? So that's option one. Option two, so all you Warriors haters are gonna be mad, but I think option the second option is for, in my opinion, the best move for Bradley Beal. Well, he might end up with the Warriors. And let that sink in. The Warriors gonna remain a powerhouse next year and for the next two, three, four years, if they can trade off D'Angelo Russell to the Wizards. I know they might not want they might need a third team to get involved because they do have John Wall still. They do have him under contract still. But they can if they can partner with the Wizards and get or maybe a third team also to trade Russell, uh D'Angelo Russell somewhere else. They get back um, Bradley Beal, partner up Steph Curry, Bradley Beal at the two, and Clay at the three when he come back in January or February. That's still a dominant shooting team. That's not quite the death lineup they had with KD and Equidala, you know, on offense and decent on defense, but they're going to be an offensive firepower uh, team still. And that might that might put them up there with the Lakers and the and uh, the Clippers for the top three teams in the Western Conference. Um, I, I think even without Bradley Beal, they they can still beat the uh, beat beat the Houston Rockets. I still have them beating the Rockets. I have the Rockets ranked higher as a better team overall team, just because I don't know how Clay's gonna come back. But if Clay was fully healthy, I would definitely give the um, edge to the Warriors. But that's my two team, my two options for Bradley Beal. Um, two blockbuster deals. Um, I think the option one might be more possible because the Thunder have all those trade picks for him. Uh, they have a lot of trade assets. They have uh, Dennis Schroeder, um, Stephen Adams, about 10 first round picks. So I think they can give up more. Uh, they have more uh, firepower to come get Bradley Beal than uh, the Warriors have. But D'Angelo Russell is a nice is a nice piece. He's definitely a nice piece, but uh, we'll see where he goes. But I, I definitely believe Andrew Wiggins and Bradley Beal and Chris Paul will have to eventually be traded by the deadline. Um, the Timberwolves are going nowhere with Andrew Wiggins. Uh, Bradley, Bradley Beal is being wasted in Washington, especially with John Wall being out. And they traded away Otto Porter last year, so... They really have a, they really have a squad of nobodies that surrounded Bradley Beal, and Bradley Beal put up great numbers, and he played well um, with without any star superstar help. He had all role players around him, and, and he played well. So um, him being in a great situation, a better situation, maybe contending for for a title, um, will 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 really put Bradley Beal in uh, the, the spotlight. And uh, let let him shine a little bit more than what he d- is doing now in Washington. And uh, you know, Chris Paul, he's he's definitely not gonna be there for a full year in uh, in OKC. Uh, if that happens, I'll be shocked. Um, but I, I don't see it happening. Not one bit. Um, I had some major news in the recruiting world that kind of went went um, under the radar. Um, a young man by the name of Marjan Baychamp, a Bowchamp, excuse me if I mispronounce his last name. Uh, he's a rising senior. Um, I'm not sure what high school, but he he's a four-star or a five-star recruit uh, currently. Um, I'm saying four or five-star because I, I looked him up when I seen the story, um, which I'm gonna get to in a few minutes. Uh, when I looked him up on ESPN Top 100 um, high schoolers for his class, 2020 class, it says he's a four star. But every report I've seen uh, says he's a five star. So I don't know what he really is, but what I've seen on ESPN, uh, ESPN 100 for the 2020 class, he's a four star recruit. Uh, he's a 29th, 29th recruit overall ranked. And. Uh, he has a ranking of a four-star uh, 89. So I guess you round it up to a 90, he, he might be a five-star, but I'm going to stay with four-star. But uh, his name is Marjan Bauchamp or Marjan Baychamp. 
uh, young man, 6'6", 180. Uh, like I said, I forgot what high school he goes to, but he's, he's deciding to skip going to college. He had a lot of, a few, not a lot, he didn't have any big time, big time like Duke, Kentucky offers, but he had, he had a few good offers. Uh, he had a lot of offers, but a few good, uh, big name, decent offers. Um, trying to think of who was, who, who was up there. I forgot who was up there, but yeah, nothing, n nothing like Kansas, Kentucky, Duke, not, no, uh, none of the blue blood, blue blood, excuse me, blue blood powerhouses. But he did have some nice offers though. Um, but he he he's decided to turn that down and pursue uh, the NBA by taking the entire year off from from school and just focus on training. Um, let me see this camp. He has a camp he's going to, excuse me for one second, find the camp name. Shoot, 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 shoot. Let's see. Uh, Marjan Bauchamp is going to train at the Chameleon BX Adapt, Overcome, Achieve. Oh, excuse me. Um, that's, that's the slogan. But he, he'll be training... Um, with the Chameleon BX training team. Um, he'll be training with that team for the entire year, getting prepared for the NBA draft, and I love the move. I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, same with RJ Hampton uh, going overseas first. I love that move more, because uh, oh, oh, um, the, the oh, oh, oh overseas scene has a lot more, um, a lot more NBA veterans and, and um, and NBA proven players um, over there in Europe and the overseas scene, so he'll have more experience than Marjan going into the draft and more playing time uh, where scouts can see him play. But um, Chameleon BX camp does have a few NBA coaches, NBA uh, former NBA coaches, NBA scouts um, that help train, that train at a camp. So. Majan should be getting in pretty good work. Um, from what I've seen, reports about who his player comparisons is, you know, it's kind of early to tell. He's only a rising senior in high school, but they say he his play reminds people of a young Paul George. So take that for what it's worth. He's only 17, 18, or 16, 17, but um, they say he could be, you know, long-term, um, looking down the, the, the road five, ten years from now, if he projected, you know, at, um, at, at his ceiling, they say he might be a Paul George type player. So, you know, that's some a team might might want to draft early on and draft and put him in the G League and let him grow, grow, grow and develop. But uh, I love the move of skipping college and going straight to training because it, it's a business, you know. Um, School isn't for everybody. You don't have to go to school for one year. If you know what you want to do, do what you want to do. You know, you don't got to go to school and waste your time and do all that and, you know, do school work. If you want to just play basketball and you have a future in doing it, put your efforts, put your money where your mouth is and do your thing. So I like what Marjan uh, is doing. I like what RJ Hampton is doing. Um, like I said, I like RJ Hampton move overseas a little bit more. I would rather you play overseas and you know, get some time in with uh, proven veterans. But, um, you know, I like Marjan's uh, deal, too. Um, I just wonder if he'll be fully prepared for what's going to, you know, for, for the uh, draft combine and all the other stuff. But um, he's going in the same route. The other man, the other young man, um, Forgot his name. He went in the second round or late first round in this year's draft. But he, two years ago, uh, he was going to Syracuse. He committed to Syracuse, but ended up uh, rescinding his offer and decided to sit the whole year and train. And he was a young man that got uh, that Adidas or Reebok or one of those shoe companies. He he got a a scholarship or not scholarship. He got like a he got he got a, a internship worth a million dollars to uh, intern at one of the shoe companies and stuff like that. He learned he learned the shoe game and the ins and outs of the shoe game. And while he was doing that, he still trained 
and stuff like that. But um, he did get drafted. I forgot his. I forgot the young man's name. He he played in summer league. He did get drafted. I forgot by who, but um, he got drafted in the late first round, early second round, and uh, they say he had potential still. He still had potential. He he showed uh, improvement from high school to that year off to where he's at now. He showed improvement. He's gotten better. So you know maybe Marjan uh, follow follow um, in his footsteps and get drafted hopefully and uh, show improving summer league and oh shoot stop recording it's still recording oh shoot no man still recording sorry but uh I don't know if it paused there or not but uh, hopefully Marjan can follow in, in his footsteps um I don't know how I don't know where to stop that but let me go over what I just said again the young man uh, went to Sy- who was going to Syracuse, committed to Syracuse two years ago, ended up not going to Syracuse. Um, he declined the offer and uh, took an internship with one of the school companies. Uh, I mean, with one of the shoe companies, a one million dollar uh, one million dollar internship. He ended up signing with Clutch Sports, uh, LeBron James, Rich Paul. Um, agency and he did an internship for an entire year while still training for the NBA. He got drafted in the late first round, early second rounds. I forgot by who, but he performed well in uh, summer league. So hopefully uh, Marjan Bauchamp or Baychamp, excuse me for the last name. I don't know uh, how, how, to, how to pronounce it, but hopefully he can follow in his footsteps and get drafted and play well also. But um, that's really it for my NBA topics. Like I said, it's kind of a dead season for the NBA. Nothing really major going on. But I do have some good topics in store for the next few weeks. Uh, I already have the topic list down in my phone and um, inside of my, my notes. I uh, have some good good topics. Nobody, you know, uh, mainstream media, ne- never debate shows. They never do new topics or topics outside the box. So I have some for, uh, in store for y'all. So... Be ready for those the next few weeks, but um, so let's get into the NFL. No, for for NFL, let's go to Last Chance You. Um, I saw that series. Me and my wife saw that series. Uh, I think last weekend. But um, I just want to talk about the culture of Last Chance You. I've seen all four seasons when they were in East Mississippi. Uh, the first two seasons, and um, they were in Kansas uh, at Independence the last two seasons. And uh, it's been a a lot of uproar about um, Coach Brown. I forgot the first coach is from East Mississippi. Uh, I forgot his name, but uh, about their about their coaching styles and how aggressive it is and how, you know, they have a dirty mouth and they'll cuss a lot and, and uh, there's not a good environment for kids to be around. Um, I played football, played high school ball, played middle school ball. I had coaches that, that I had coaches that that um, decided not to cuss and not to get in your face on that rah rah. I had coaches to do the rah rah and uh, get in your face, cuss you out, spit not spit in your face, but no spit flying. They real animated when they talk. I had both. I've seen both, and it's just really how. It just it depends on the person on how they take it. You know, some I've seen teammates not be able to, able to take that well, end up quitting or leaving the team or getting kicked off the team or not responding to the actions well. But I've seen some take it and, you know, t- um, they just just took it in stride and worked on their game from the, the harsh criticism. You know what I mean? So it just depends on how 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 each person takes it. But it looks like Coach Brown and the other coach. I've got his, sorry for saying the other coach. I've got his name, but uh, Coach Brown, especially from at least talking about the last two two seasons, um, you know, he he doesn't care which which player it is. He doesn't differ. He doesn't doesn't differentiate, and he doesn't pick and choose his spots. He comes at the, come at everybody the same way every time, which shows consistency. That's good. But you also have to learn the players and learn what they need to hear and what and what 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 they should hear. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's good to show consistency and you're fair with everybody. But at the same time, you every player doesn't respond the same. So doing the animated, super animated, super aggressive talk kind of sometimes loses players and loses people. Uh, even out, even outside of sports, it loses people. So, Coach Brown, uh, the only reason why I'm talking about this is because I've seen a, a, a post or a, a TV show. I forgot where I was at. I seen something or read something about can Coach Brown, because he said it um, on, on one of the seasons that he's been getting D1 offers and, and D1 looks, but he turned them down because he would rather stay, stay in JUCO. And people were saying he might be lying and what team, what major program would want to hire Coach Brown to be their, you know, their face of the franchise, their, their face of the school. And I kind of do understand that. But you do have coaches out here like Frank Martin, uh, the former the f- former Kansas. We do have guys out here like Frank Martin, uh, the former uh, Kansas State basketball coach, men's basketball coach. Um, I forgot. I think Frank Martin might be at South Carolina now. The South Carolina Gamecocks. I think he is over there. Um, but yeah, he's been very aggressive. Put his hands on players. Got in players' faces o- over the years. Um, so I think there's a place for it. So uh, I'll disagree with the person saying he might be lying. Or Coach Brown might be lying about his job opportunities and the D1 offers. I think it'll be a. I, I don't think it'd be a big major program, but I think a mid-level, your average uh, D1 team, maybe uh, one of your lower-level D1 teams. I think they'll bring Coach, uh, Coach Brown in. I really think they uh, would because he'll provide some celebrity and some spark, and maybe provide some maybe provide some good recruiting to, to, to your program that other coaches couldn't from the fame, from the, from the show. So, um, you know, you never know, but I think there is a place for Coach Brown um, in the D1 ranks, M- maybe lower level, mid-level D1, or like top level D2. But um, I think there's a place for Coach uh, Brown because there's a, a place for Coach Frank Martin. I said he's been very aggressive with players. He put his hands on players a few times, um, you know, stuff like that. So if there's a place for him in men's basketball, football is more violent, uh, is more accept- acceptable to, to be violent and more acceptable to be flagrant and stuff like that. I think there's a place, definitely a place for Coach Brown um, in the D1 Low level D one, maybe high level D two type of uh, program. But let's uh, let's see what else. I want to give a big shout out to Greg Jennings and Ryan Clark, two former players. Uh, Ryan Clark being uh, known for um, his time being a safety, uh, with a free safety, a strong safety, being safety for the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers for a long time. Probably about eight to ten years plus years after that he went to the Redskins, whatever. But we know Ryan Clark for being a uh, Pittsburgh Steeler, um, and Greg Jennings. Uh, you know, we know him for being a Super Bowl champion with the uh, Green Bay Packers. He played with Brett Favre. He's a star receiver there with Brett Favre. Also, the star receiver for um, Aaron Rodgers when they won the title in 2011. Uh, I believe. Ryan Clark won a title or two with the Pittsburgh Steelers also, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yes, uh, those, those two guys, man, I want to shout out those guys because uh, as, as analysts, I don't watch too many people. Um, like I said, I, I rarely watch first take. Like I said, I saw first take today on YouTube. I don't really watch it live anymore since Skip Bayless left. Um, but I do watch Undisputed sometimes live, rarely, but I do watch it. But I watch most of them my clips on um, YouTube. But when they have special guests on or guests to help with a segment, I I always pick and choose who I like to who I like to watch with Skip and Shannon or sometimes used to be with Skip and Stephen A. Um, but I always click on Ryan Clark and Greg Jennings, especially when they're filling in for one of the guys full time for the entire show. 
I really watch them because I like to see their viewpoints on things because they keep it real and, and those two guys keep, uh, keep it very honest. I know there's more players out there that do anal- that that do um, analyst work and they probably do the same thing they do, be real and honest about certain situations, but I don't watch those guys, so I can't comment on those guys, but I do have a lot of respect because I do watch Ryan Clark and Greg Jennings a lot in the past. Uh, on first take, when Skip, I say when Skip was on first take, I used to watch uh, Greg Jennings over there and Ryan Clark. And I, I believe both guys might have went with Skip to F. Not went with him, but they. I think they both. I know Greg Jennings for sure is on uh, Fox Sports One. I'm not sure about Ryan Clark. I don't remember. I think Ryan Clark is on Fox Sports One also, if I'm not mistaken. But um, those two guys, man. They're not scared to go to battle with their former fans of their teams. You know, uh, Greg Jennings has is always called upon when an Aaron Rodgers topic is on, and he doesn't shy away from the topic. And he does it so well that I respect him because he doesn't he doesn't all out bash his quarterback like some guys, some former players do. He tells the good and the bad. He tells the truth. You know what I mean? Um, he tells the good of Aaron Rodgers and the bad of Aaron Rodgers. And he tells what seems like it's the, the blatant truth. You know, some some guys, uh, I'm going to say any names, but some of the analysts be kind of wishy-washy on their topics. And they pick and choose who, who they want to critique. But Ryan Clark, and uh, which Ryan Clark has also been uh, very um, opinionated on uh, Antonio Brown and Big Ben. So, you know, and Mike Tomlin to a certain degree. So I do enjoy those two guys, watching those two guys. They're not scared to hold nothing back. They're doing their job to the fullest. They're not picking and choosing who they want to critique and not. And they're not scared to go to battle with their former diehard fans because, you know, they saying they might be a traitor or, you know, even even former teammates saying you're snitching on them and stuff like that, but they're just doing their job. But they are doing it in a, in a fair manner. You know, every time, like I said, every time it's a it's a package situation going on with Aaron Rodgers and Mike McCarthy, when the big Mike McCarthy scandal came out with the big article, Greg Jennings was on TV for a week straight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he came to the came to every interview, came to every segment, told the truth, told the good, told the bad, told the in between. You know what I'm saying? And Ryan Clark has done a pass in the same manner with the Pittsburgh Steelers with the Big Ben, Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown, Mike Tomlin organization. You know, the Steelers organization had issues uh, the last few years with Le'Veon Bell holding out, Antonio Brown wilding out when he wanted to. So uh, Ryan Clark has came to battle you know, on words. Uh, he had words with on Twitter with Antonio Brown a few times. And Greg Jennings has had through the media back and forth with Aaron Rodgers a few times and, and other former teammates. So I just want to give, them, give those guys a great shout out. I mean, a big shout out for doing a great job and doing their job fairly. I appreciate them two guys. Um, yeah, man, I, I like guys like that, man. Ryan Clark and Greg Jennings, former players, keeping it honest and uh, keeping it fair. So let's move on to... Um, what I think might be the toughest division um, in NFL football right now, which is the NFC North, you have um, four decent teams. Or you have three good teams, three playoff-bound teams. Uh, you know, only two can probably um, get in. But uh, you have uh, the, the Detroit Lions, which are the the babies of the uh, babies of the of the, the, the division. You have uh, the Minnesota Vikings, playoff team, um, potential playoff team. Um, The Green Bay Packers, they missed the playoffs the last two years, but, you know, you never count out um, Aaron Rodgers. And you have my favorite, my second favorite to come out of the the NFC, the Chicago Bears. So um, you kind of know where I'm leaning towards already, who who, who, who will be ranked first. And last um, in this division, but um, I'll, I'll go ahead and go first. So you, you know what I'm going to first. The Bears are going to be first for me. Um, 
and depending on seeding, on how well on their eventual seeding, if they get home, if they get the first seed, if they get home field over the New Orleans Saints, who is my first overall seed, or my my well my best, who I think is the best team in the NFC, um, with everyone healthy, I think the Saints have a better team than the Chicago Bears. But if the Bears somehow get, um, if the Bears somehow get the number one seed over the Saints or a better seed in the Saints and get home field advantage, I think it's a wrap. And they play in that cold. They play in the outside weather at the Soldiers, Old Soldiers Field in Chicago. I think it's a wrap. I think the Bears are going to eat eat Drew Brees up for, the, for uh, dinner during that game. But it all depends on seating for me. All It's all on seating. If the Saints get home field over the Bears, I think the Saints win. In a close, in a close, close, close game, but if the Bears get home field uh, in that cold weather in November, in in the December, in an NFC Championship game, that's what they're on, that's who I'm predicting to be um, those those two teams. I really think the Bears are gonna wipe the floor with the Saints. Um, you know, Drew uh, Drew Brees has shown age over the last few years, same as Tom Brady, but um. You know, uh, he kind of dwindled down. He kind of dwindled towards the season, end of the season last year. So um, I think the outside, that outside weather, the outside cold will definitely affect. And that great defense of the Chicago Bears, uh, with leading, led by Khalil Mack and um, Eddie Jackson, I think uh, they're going to do a number on uh, Drew Brees if they do uh, wind up playing those. Uh, playing them outside in Soldiers Field in that cold weather. But number one, I have the Chicago Bears. Um, I like them a lot, man. I like them a lot. Uh, the word in camp is Mitch Trubisky is playing great. He's playing well. He's uh, He has improved since last season. He was a game manager. Uh, they say he's you know, still a game manager, but he's still he's managing better. He's making better throws. He looks more confident. He knows the playbook more. Um, they still have weapons. They have Mike Davis, Tariq Cohen. They have a receiver, um, Taylor Gabriel, Speedster. I like a lot. This next guy, um, uh, Anthony Miller out of Memphis. He was a first, uh, he was a, I don't know what round pick, but he was a, uh, uh, mid the late draft pick last year for the, um, Chicago Bears. Anthony Miller out of, out of Memphis, if I'm not mistaken. Great receiver. I like him a lot. I expect a big year from him this year. Um, gr- good running game with Tariq Cohen and Mike Davis. Um, cool receivers. I, I like those two a lot. Um, their defense, man, is, the, is, is their calling card. Their defense is going to win them a lot of games. If Khalil Mack can show up how he did last year, but Khalil Mack has to be more consistent. He has to be. More, he, has to be. Um, he, was, he played in spurts. So, you know, I don't know if it's a motor or whatever, but he has to step up more and be more consistent with the great defense around him. You know, he 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 played balls to the wall in Oakland Raiders, you no know, with nobody around him. But with the team around him, he didn't play balls to the wall. He need to be consistent. That motor has to keep going the entire game, not just pick and choose. But um he played a great a great year last year kind of was silent through the end of the season, the last few games of the season into the playoffs. He was kind of silent, kind of sort of a little bit. Just look, to, look for him to be more consistent, more of a uh, more of a high-running motor. But um, their defense is nasty, man. They have Leonard Floyd, Khalil Mack, Eddie Jackson, uh, Kyle Fuller at, um, at cornerback. I like him. They have um, Roquan Smith at middle linebacker. Whew, it's going to be tough. It's a tough defense, man. Tough defense. Tough defense. Uh, but I had them ranked number one in the, in the NFC North. Um, number two, I have the Minnesota Vikings. So that means I do have I so that mean I do have the Aaron Rodgers leg Green Bay Packers number three. I have them uh, not making a playoff for a third straight year. Um, even though their defense, if I go, before I go to the Packers, I go, I'll go to the number two team, to the Vikings. Um, they have a shot at the wild card, for sure. Um, I just don't believe in Kirk Cousins. Good offense, Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen, Kevin Rudolph. 
um, so solid weapons. I'm just not a believer in uh, Kirk Cousins. Never have been, never will be. He's a, he's he's a worse version of me of Alex Smith. You know what I mean? And I'm not really believing in Alex Smith either. So, uh, but I do believe in Alex Smith more than I do than I like Kirk Cousins. So, you know, that's even you know, that's worse on on Kirk Cousins in my in my opinion. So, um, he's just a dink and dunker. You know, he's not clutch at all. He doesn't show any clutch gene in him. Um, I'm just not a big Kirk Cousins fan. Um, it, it depends on the running game too. He needs he needs a running game to 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 work to work for him. You know, um, which which is a lot. Quote, but it's not a bad thing. A lot of quarterbacks do too. Tom Brady does too. Because if Tom Brady had had a running game in the Super Bowl last year, it would it would have been a different story. But that's another uh, topic for another topic for another day. But um, you know, those Vikings. If they had a different quarterback, they could challenge the, in my opinion, they, they could challenge the Bears. Their defense is right on par with the Bears, probably a little step behind. If the Bears defenses are eight nine, I think the Vikings are six, seven, seven, eight, somewhere in that range. They're right right behind those those guys. But I think on the offensive end, I think the Bears are a little bit better. Um, you know, I know Kirk Cousins is more seasoned than Mitch than Mitch. Uh, Trubisky is, but I like the weapons more. I like Stefan Diggs and Adam Thielen, but I like the gadget plays. They're, uh, they're, um, they, they all ran last year. Tariq Cohen is a great weapon to have, uh, a good weapon out of running back. He can move to the slot. He can move to receiver. Um, you know, it's, like I said, I like Stefan Diggs and Adam, Adam Thielen a lot, but I think uh, you know, by 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 committee, Anthony Miller and Taylor Gabriel and all their gadget plays and weapons, um, along with, with uh Cordell Patterson for the for the Bears, they can uh they're a little bit better than me as a group than the Vikings have. So um I have Vikings number two, uh Packers number three, um, you know, another miss year for, in my opinion for uh, another missed playoff for um Aaron Rodgers. Um, third straight. Um, it's all come down to no, to having no having no running game. That's all it is. He hasn't had a running game in a long time. If if ever, if I remember, I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure. Maybe that. Maybe his uh championship year, 2011, might have been his running game. When he had a running game, I'm not really sure. But um, he hasn't had a running game in a long, at least three, four years, at least four. At least four years for sure. He hasn't had a at least an average running game. His running game has been subpar for the last four years, at least. But um, you know, Jeremy uh, Jeremy Graham is Jeremy Graham, Graham at tight end. He hasn't really he hasn't really delivered like they thought he would. He's been okay, but he hasn't been. You know, you're not gonna get Jeremy Graham. Is it Jeremy Graham? I'm gonna say Graham. I forgot his first name. But you, you're not gonna get Graham from the Saints. You're not gonna get that. Uh, but every year since he's been with the Seahawks and now to the Packers, he's kind of been on the downside of his career. Uh, he's been okay, but he's not been what they needed him to be. Uh, Devontae Adams is still a stud, that best receiver um, by 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 far. Um, but no running game. Uh, Graham isn't um, doing what they thought he would do. Devontae Adams will get a, a, a probably, I'm sure a few double coverages, um, a lot of doubles um, this this year. So, um, their defense has gotten better. Um, Clay Matthews gone, but he hasn't been a factor for a few years either. But um, the defense, especially their um, their um, their cover corners and safeties, they've gotten a lot better. They drafted well. They drafted young guys who played well over the last uh, year or two. Um, they keep getting better. Um, they have Amos back there at, at a safety position from the Bears. Um, they the Bears and the Packers kind of traded safeties. Amos from the Bears went to the Packers. Ha ha Clinton Dix, Dix went from the uh, Packers to the Bears. So they kind of swap. But um, um, I think ha 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 is better than Amos in my opinion. I think he'll fit better and uh, be able to roam better back there and hit better than he did in uh, Green Bay. 
but he was a stud in Green Bay. I think he he'll even be better in that great defense with the Bears than he was with the Packers. But um, yeah, I had him third. Uh, no no running game. Still a young defense. They they they're, they're better, but still a young defense, and no running game for Rodgers with no real help for Devontae Adams. I think gonna cause him to be third again. Um, and for the Lions, um, not too much to say about them. They're still the still the Lions. Um, you know they need they need to find a big trade for a receiver or something. Uh. Matt Stafford had that big contract for no reason. I, uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, but um, Matt, Matt, Matt Stafford doesn't really have the weapons necessary to, to compete in, the, in, in that division. You know, he's he's probably the second best quarterback behind um, behind Aaron Rodgers in the, in the NFC North, but his weapons are subpar at you no know, subpar to average. Nothing real special. Um, they have Marvin Jones. He's cool. He's he's cool, but nothing but nothing to really write home about. Um, yeah, not really. No, no real need to discuss the Detroit Lions. They they just gotta. Yeah, no, no, no real need to discuss the Lions, man. They just gotta um find something. But uh, I don't know what, but they gotta find something. Well, um, that's really it for football. I have more top- topics, but I'm going to wait uh, for next week to bring them on. I do have more topics for football, but I'm going I'm to keep it up for next week. Um, let's see. On to... Oh, it's a cool story to in, 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 the, in the show with. Cool story involving... Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to have to end if I don't want to. I'm, the thing is, I'm not. I'm not recording. Uh, the reason why episode five was only on SoundCloud is because I'm recording on my tablet right now. I have a uh, a, a microphone hooked up to my tablet, but um, I normally record on my laptop, which lets me uh, have it on all platforms. But the tablet, the way the megabytes go, come on, uh, download so fast. Oh, am I saying it right? Whatever. But the way it records basically on my tablet, uh, it gets a lot fuller faster. So, and the the website I use to upload my content on, so it'll be available on all platforms. It has it has a threshold, and recording on the tablet for too long goes over that threshold. So I'm trying to see where I'm at right now. I should be good. So cool. So we can do some. We can do one more football topic, and then we'll go to the last topic. It's a cool story I found out on Instagram today. But um, we can go to the topic, uh, basically, basically involving, or basically, is Zeke uh, Ezekiel Elliott versus Jerry Jones, and but not really those two guys. It's really about uh, knowing knowing your value. Knowing, 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 knowing your value and knowing what you're worth, man. Um, I think Zeke should still hold out. I don't, I don't think Zeke should look out for no team. He'll, he'll look out. No, I know Jared Jones. They say helped him out with his issues off, off the field. Got him great lawyers. Got him the help, whatever. And that's that's fine. But you know, but at Jared Jones, you knew what you were drafting. He's he's notorious for drafting a uh, bad character to iffy character to you know just not bad guys but just bad judgment guys you know that 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 do that have poor judgment you know and Zeke was one of them guys in college had a few mishaps uh you know and they still took him fourth overall what four years ago now and um no they got what they wanted from him. They got great, great work on the field, but they also got what they should have known that they were going to get, which was baggage off the field, you know. Um, so, but all in all, though, Zeke should hold out for what he's worth. I don't care about Todd Gurley's injury and the Rams might regret that. I'm not Todd. Zeke, Zeke should come to the standpoint where I'm not Todd Gurley. I've not been hurt yet. The only time I missed games was when I was, I was uh, suspended by the NFL. 
what for four games I, 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 um, I believe it was. But other than that, Zeke has been the best running back in the NFL outside that year with the, with the um, suspensions. Zeke has been amazing. And he's been everything y'all want him to be on the field and off the field. So uh, if I'm Zeke, I'm going for what I'm worth. And and that and that goes to and that not goes just to him as a player, but to see where his team is at overall. I don't think Dak Prescott can lead can lead the Cowboys to a Super Bowl uh, without Zeke. I don't see it happening. I don't care what running back they bring in, Alpha Morris, unsigned free agents, current free agents, trade for Adrian Peterson, it's not gonna happen. They are not Zeke. It's not going to happen. No way, no how. Shout out to Rob Parker. Not going to happen. Zeke, Zeke is not that good yet. If ever he'll if, if, if he'll ever be that, that uh, good, I don't believe so. But he's not that good yet. I don't care about Amari Cooper. Uh, Jason Witten's back. Doesn't matter. You need a ground game for Dak Prescott. Same as Mitch Trubisky. I, th- I do think Dak is better than, than Mitch, Mitch, Mitch Trubisky is. But I, I think they, like I said, all quarterbacks, Kirk Cousins, Ben Roethlisberger, all quarterbacks, for the most part, need a running game to help with their passing game. Which is not a bad thing. It's just, you know, everybody needs help. You know, nobody except for maybe Pat Mahomes right now can win without running the ball effectively. Pat Mahomes, Big Ben, Phillip Rivers, Drew Brees. That's about it. Andrew Luck, because Andrew Luck has been winning without a run game for a long time, a run game and pass protection. But, um, you know, outside of those guys, not really too many quarterbacks can win without a good running game. Tom Brady needs a running game. He needs one bad, bad. A good old line, a running game, Tom Brady needs that. I say it's not a bad thing, but, you know, that's what the standard quarterback needs anyway. But Big Ben can do his thing without a, without a running game and without a good old line. I've seen Big Ben do it. I've seen Phillip Rivers do it. Uh, I've seen a few guys do it, man. So, um, you know, I, I think Dak is one of those guys that need, that need a running game. So, um, you know, and Zeke is that guy to alleviate their pressure off of Dak. So Alpha Morris might do it for a game or two, might do it for a quarter or two, for a drive or two, but Zeke can give it, can eat all game. He's going to eat all game, just about every game. He's going to lead the league in rushing every year for the most part. So from my viewpoint, Zeke, you know your worth, which is you no know, top notch, same as Todd Gurley. And, same, and speaking of Todd Gurley, Todd Gurley got paid because they need him in that they, – well, they, they thought they needed him in that system to help make Jared Goff work. But they, I guess they didn't because uh, Anderson came in late last year and in the playoffs and showed, you know, it might be the system more than it is Todd Gurley. But Todd Gurley is great. Don't get me wrong. But it might be the system right for, for right in this Rams team right now. It might be the system more than it is Gurley. So you never know. But, uh, you know, Gurley might be in, in trouble with his contract. I don't know if it's guaranteed or not. Not, not It's not fully guaranteed. But, um you know, um, Zeke, like I said, he's not girl. He's not. He's never been hurt. No serious injuries. And I know he has off the field issues. But like I said, his quarterback, same as Jared Goff, as they thought uh, about Gurley and Goff. Goff need Gurley. As they know, they might be wrong in that situation. It might be the system, whatever. But for the Cowboys, it's been shown they do need Zeke. They do need him. So, if I'm Zeke, I know my quarterback. Okay, Amar Cooper might go off, have a few good games. At the end of the day, they won't be as effective um, without Zeke in the backfield, taking the eyes on the, the the linebacker eyes and the safety eyes coming down, whatever. Zeke draws that attention that other running backs for the Cowboys have won't won't do. So I think I do think you know Zeke look at his team. Okay, Jason went back. No, is no biggie. Dak Prescott, quarterback, he's not. A, he's not. You know what I mean. He can't do it by himself. Amari Cooper, cool. 
the the the, the defense is, is cool as well. Um, the defense has improved year by year. Um, they're I want to say top. They're probably top ten, top fifteen defense for sure. Top top fifteen. They're probably top ten defense, but they still gonna need a running game, and I'm the missing piece. And I think Zeke should hold out because Jerry Jones will break, in my opinion. But I did see reports, not reports, but I did see a a young lady on not first take on Undisputed and Colin Carher show. Uh, she was a reporter for the Cowboys. Uh, inside reporter for the Cowboys, Jane something. I've got her name. I apologize to her for not remembering her name, but um, she had a great point about you know athletes get paid during the season, not during the off season. So we never know. Zeke might just be bluffing. You know, um, Zeke's Zeke's in Cabo um, right now, tra- uh, supposed to be training, but uh, Cabo is where his agent has property in, so they stand there training there. But she was saying, you know, players get players get get paid during the during the season while they're playing. During the off season, their their income is, is gone. No uh for the most part. At least their 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 game check income is gone until the game until the games roll back around. So Zeke isn't making his game check money right now at all. So you never know how much Zeke has saved and stuff like that. And, you no, know, you never know how much money he has and how much he might need the money and stuff like that. So she's saying Jerry Jones might hold Stephen Jones, his son, who also runs a team. Uh, they don't. He might end up waiting Zeke out to see if Zeke will miss game checks, um, which will be, like I said, you never know where his – how – stable he is financially is he able to do that so um you know it just i hope zeke is so he can make this last for the long haul but you never know you know what i'm saying uh, i don't want to no I, i'm not looking at his pockets or looking at his contract that's not my business but uh you know he was a fourth round pick he got paid well guaranteed money but you never know how how people spend it you know what i'm saying so um it's a battle of a uh, of a uh, 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 attrition now. It depends on if if you know Zeke has money saved up in uh in the in the bank to see if if he's able to with withhold from missing um or be able to stand uh missing a few game checks or a few you know checks stuff like that to see if he's able to do a Le'Veon Bell and miss an entire year or half a year or two, three games until they got it done. You know what I mean? So it's I hope I really do hope Zeke has money saved or has, you know, some form of income coming outside of football because I would love to see players get what they're worth. Stand your ground. These team in my opinion, I'm I'm very player player friendly. I want to be in the NFL one day and I would like to have you no know, I would get, like to get paid my worth if I play for NFL um one day. That was my dream growing up didn't happen but um you know if if i was a player i want to get paid my worth and you know um i hope zeke holds firm in his belief i want to get paid what i want to get paid if not i'm not coming I, I hope he can stand his ground and you know stay in for a long term and i hope uh he can you know and we'll see what happens if, if he does um, I can't guess either way. Like I said, I don't know his money. I don't know his financial. Um, I don't know Zeke's financial situation. I know Jerry Jones can wait all day, but you know, at the same time, his football team can't. So we'll see who breaks first. Um, if I had to guess, I'll probably say Jerry Jones because I think his time running short as being a, not being an owner but being a figurehead. I think he wants to win now. I think he. I think this is opportunity to win now the team he has now um you know with everybody needing with his main stars need, needing to be played paid his um big three also some guys on defensive side of all Jalen Smith Byron Jones uh need, need to be paid soon and you, Amara Cooper Amara Cooper is in contract talks right now that Prescott is in contract talks right now and Zeke is also so you know this might be the last hurrah for this Dallas Cowboys team until they had to break it up 
for real, for real, next year or maybe two years, but probably next year. So we'll see what's going to happen. But, um, you know, I do think Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones, I think the Cowboys will break first. And I think they will give Zeke his uh, big contract. Um, just, know, just, just know what you're worth, man. Know what you're worth and hold firm on that. You know what I'm saying? And that goes for other players, man, especially Melvin Gordon. Uh, he demanded a trade. News came out today. He demanding a, man, demanded a trade last week from the Chargers. But at the same time, is this worth he, – he's not as worth – he's not as valuable as Zeke is to the Cowboys as he is to, to, to the Chargers. Uh, Mel, Melvin Gordon has been often injured throughout his career so far. So, uh, you know – um, Philip Rivers has, has done it without him for a, a bunch of a stretches of uh, seasons and a few games throughout throughout these these three four seasons. Melvin Gordon has been in, been in the league, so I don't think he's gonna win this battle. I, I don't see Melvin Gordon winning this battle. Um, you know, I don't know where he's gonna be traded to. If he does, I, I doubt he can be traded. I think he's gonna come back. And take his contract and wait like everybody else will. I don't. I don't. I don't think uh, he's gonna get a contract extension. I don't see it. I don't think they value him as much as he values himself to the team because he's been often injured. He's been injured a lot over the last uh, three, four seasons. So for him to demand a contract because he played great a year, a year and a half, you know that's cool. But you haven't been here for the entire stretch of that time. So. Um, I don't know about Melvin Gordon. He might not win that battle, but, um, you know, I hope he does, but I don't think he will. But, no, I, I hope he gets paid. If not, you trade and get paid from somebody. But um, that's the same for all sports, though, man. Know your worth. If not, sit out. I'm not playing until you pay me what, what I'm worth. You know what I'm saying? Um I feel the same way with, with my job in real life. You know, I don't play sports, but I have a real job. I don't do the same thing, but I can't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not working until you pay me what I'm worth, but it's, it's not going to fly with what I do or with real life work. But, um, you know, guys, just sit out, man. Save your bread. Sit out and wait until you get paid what you're worth to your team. Like I said, but don't don't sit out unless you know you're worth that to the team. You know what I mean? Mel, Melvin Gordon. I don't think you're worth that to the Chargers. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. On the other hand, Michael Thomas, the highest-paid receiver in the league right now, is worth all that and more to the Saints. All that and more. A uh, hundred million dollars, five years, a hundred million dollars, uh, sixty-one million guaranteed. I love it. They had. They had to. They had to. They had to. They had no other option. Michael Thomas threatened to sit out. I thought he sat he sat out he sat out maybe like one or two days, and then and the deal got got uh, done. Like I said, this is Drew Brees' last hurrah. Know your worth, know your value. I'm the best receiver this team has by a long shot. Uh, let's see, Michael Thomas led led the team in receiving by 97 catches. 97 catches uh, was. The difference between him and the next receiver, 97 balls. That's crazy. That that yeah, for sure. I'm holding out. I don't care if I got a contract the year before. I'm holding out for an even big contract <laughs> this next season. Cause Lord, 97 balls. The the catches. The difference between me and receiver number two on the team. That is crazy. And the Saints are stacked too. They 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 added Jared Cook. Um at um at the tight end position, which is a great move. So they have two weapons now that can catch and go off. Uh, Jared Cook has been putting up numbers for the last four or five years, which I broke down my NFC South breakdown, I think, episode two or three. But um, he's been balling out for a long time now for a lot of different teams. He hasn't stuck for some reason, but he's been balling out for a long time now. So with him and Michael Thomas on the same team now, my man, it's more, it's more weapons. Uh, so when Michael Thomas get double get double team, Jared Cook can go off, and once he go off, you know what I mean, and they put more attention on him. You have Kamara still, you have uh, La- Latavius Murray still, or now instead of Mark Ingram. 
I think the Saints would be, like I said, I have them number one in the NFC right right now with a close second, and depending on seeding, um, I, ha- I have, excuse me, mm, my, voice getting, my voice going away. Uh, I have the Bears second, it's depending on seeding in the playoffs. Whoever has home field advantage, I think, is the, is the will win that matchup in the NFC Championship game. But um, like I said, just players, man, know your worth, man. All sports, all walks of life, you know, real life jobs, real life situations, know your worth, man. Especially players, especially everybody. Forget, just a player, everybody, know your worth. Don't get hold out your money, don't get hold out your situations because, you know what I mean, they, they ask nicely or they begging you, you know, you pay me what I'm worth. And Zeke, stay strong, hold out, Melvin Gordon, you might got to, you know what I mean, reflect and think, am I worth this much for real? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just look back and think first before you, you know what I mean, before you go out too far in the deep end and start losing game check, checks, um, Mel, Melvin Gordon. Think about what you're doing for sure. And, and you know what I mean, make, make, make sure you know your worth because uh, I don't know, I don't know, brother. You, you might not be worth that much to the Chargers. You know what I'm saying? Know, know your worth and know your worth to the team too. So, um, but on, on to my last topic, um, a cool story on Instagram I saw today, uh, by an, a man named Nathan, uh, Nathan Peterson, excuse me, Nathan Patterson Peterson, let me make sure, make sure the man's name, I don't want to get it wrong, even though I already said it, shoot, what's his name? Yeah, um, Nathan, um, Nathan, Nathan Patterson, um, Nathan Patterson, 24 years old, signed, uh, excuse me, if I skip, if I go to the story, he, he went to a, uh, Colorado Rockies, Oakland A's game, uh, back a little bit ago, a few months ago, um, and it, it's, it's a little fan zone there, uh, a little fan zone where you can throw, uh, throw, throw, throw pitches, and it clocks your speed. Um, he was, he was a former player. He last played, he last played baseball in middle school, in middle school, he last played baseball in middle school. So he's 24, middle school, uh, is around 13 to 15, 14, uh, no, excuse me, <laughs> middle school is around, what, 12 to 14, something like that. So over about 10 years, you no, know, 10, 11 years ago, last time he played baseball, and he was throwing uh, 94 miles per hour plus on uh, back to back on like four or five straight throws. Uh, he was doing straight four seam fastballs, and they were all clocking in at 94 or uh, or uh, 94 to 97 miles per hour. So uh, he ended up going viral, and his, his brother and family members started uh, started the uh, campaign to. You no, know, let to make a team sign him. You know, he's all he's all going viral, and then the campaign came behind that. So, uh, he 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 got a real big buzz in just one week. That next week, uh, the next week later, um, after that Colorado's Rockies and Oakland A's game, the Oakland A's called him, and um, they want they showed they showed interest in him. So from that point on, a few months passed, he joined. Um, he ended up joining a rec league. Uh, wherever he's from, I'm not sure where he's from. He joined he joined the rec league and started pitching there uh, to you know brush up on brush up on his mechanics and a few throws he uh, needs to develop. So he he developed a slider uh, a, a slider and um, a few change up pitches to change change the speeds. Uh, we, we, we throw the batters. He um, his slider now has a, a little bit of movement on it. And he's hit uh, the speed clocks in around 70 to 80 miles per hour. So he's throwing real nasty stuff with no experience, but with a fresh arm. He remember he hasn't played since middle school. He, has, he hasn't pitched in 10, 11 years seriously. So like seriously pitched. So he's 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 in a rec, he was in a rec league. So I think just today or just uh, yesterday or last week or sometime like that. He, uh, the Oakland A's called him again. They saw what he was doing. He was posting uh, every day. He was posting pitching uh, um, 
of, of videos on Instagram and Facebook and social media sites and stuff like that. Showing off his new pitches, showing off the movement, showing off the speed still, showing he's not a fluke. Um, and the Oakland A's called again saying they, they want to sign him to a, to a contract. So uh, that's that's cool, man. You know, social media, get, social media with a million things wrong with it and the critiques we have for it, this one thing kind of outweighs those bad things, man, where somebody's dream can come true, that they can be found on social media off of throwing in a fan zone area in, in a professional baseball game to a few months later be signed by a base a real a real live major league baseball team sign a contract off of throwing in a fan zone pitch area. That's crazy. So shout out to Nathan um the Nathan Patterson. Um he signed recently, I'm not sure the exact date, I think yesterday, August second, I think, I think yesterday. I'm not sure for I'm not sure but uh I seen a lot of reports saying it was yesterday but I'm not sure and I don't wanna uh, give give the wrong date, but um, he he signed. Um, they they haven't the team hasn't assigned him to what level yet. Uh, a, double A, triple A, whatever. But he says his goal is to um, end up going to the major big to no to um the big leagues to um, plan for the MLB, actual the Oakland A's team the you no know, the pro team. So hopefully his dream comes true, man. Um. It's a crazy story. It's a cool story. It also might be uh, a future, like, pioneer story, man, because, you know, like, like I said, his arm is super fresh. He hasn't pitched in 10, 11 years. So for him to be throwing that hard, that, that consistent and stuff like that, uh, a lot of prospect scouts, a lot of teams, a lot of uh, former scouts and current scouts and People who watch the game uh, on, on a full-time basis, unlike my, my, myself, a lot of those guys are, are, are saying Nathan Patterson might be the new normal because, like, might be a star and might be the new normal for a team to look for guys who have been pitching a long time because their arms are, are super fresh. You know, a lot of guys, you know, the, the normal major league route, you've been pitching since middle school, high school, college, and and sometimes also in the in the minor leagues too, so you have all that wear and tear on on uh, your arm is going to require Tommy John surgery soon, or you no know, wear and tear. You're tired, you know. Uh, you had like um, r- rotator cuff injuries, tired arm, dead arm, all that stuff that can go on. Nathan Peterson, uh, excuse me, Nathan Patterson, and others like him who teams might now start to target. Um, they might, they shouldn't have that issue because they haven't pitched in so long. They have a fresh arm. So his, his arm is really, you know, instead of an MLB arm, a major league player arm being, you no, know, if the guy's 30, his arm's probably like 35, 40 because of wear and tear on it. So many pitches, so many innings, you no, know, since middle school to now, you know, to where, to where they're at now, Nathan, uh, Nathan Peterson has a young man's arm. You know, his, his, his 24 year old arm might be like a 18, 16, 17, 18 year old arm because of the less, at least in, at least in the baseball world, it might be that young of an arm because he hasn't had much uh, activity using it in like the baseball term. So um, he, he might be a pioneer one day, man. You never know if he does if he does work out. Maybe if he even doesn't. Um, Workout, you might start seeing teams target other guys like him that uh, you know somehow show off their their uh, their um, skill set, and they are brought in to minor league contract deals and stuff like that. So you never know what this might start and what this might be the the new normal for um, major league baseball. So just keep your eyes out for him, Nathan Patterson. Uh, with the Oakland A's, um, hopefully his dream come true and go to the big leagues. It'll be cool to see. It'd be fun to watch. It'd be a great story. It's already a great story. It'd be an even better story if he can uh, make make the big leagues and make the big leagues and make and make a name for himself and make some noise. But um, if not, it's already a cool, great story. But um, shout out to him, man. It's a cool, cool story, man. It's crazy.
Um, but that'll be it for this episode, man. Hope y'all enjoyed episode six. Um, be sure to be sure to download, listen, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcast, um, SoundCloud, YouTube, everywhere, man. This podcast, Dash Free Sports Podcast, is everywhere. Go, go tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell a friend. Share on Facebook. Again, my social media is Stash Free Sports on Facebook and Instagram. Be sure to follow on both. Um, comment, uh, DM, let's debate on topics, whatever you want to do, man. Hit, hit me up. Let's go. I'll see y'all episode seven. Peace.